call the meeting to order. Um, and uh, let's see, the first on the agenda, um, the Agency of Education has put RTCC on an improvement plan. And um, I am smiling about this because I think it's a very good thing because we have a great plan for how we are going to get not only back on track, um, but also I think really uh, make everybody very happy and impress them with what we've done. And so um, on the last page um, of the packet, you'll find that there is a grid here where I have listed out all of the programs and the two IRCs that we're going to be offering in each program. And so the improvement plan is due to the fact that programs at RTCC up until last year um, were not offering tier two IRCs across the board. And not only were they not being offered, but the state says that students must show 50% attainment at a minimum of every IRC offered in order for it to be a program of distinction. And so the situation that we were in was that IRCs were being offered if students were interested in them, but not something that was done as part of the class and expected of all students to try their best on and earn that IRC. However, families and um, workplaces in the in industry would definitely expect that students would have these industry recognized credentials because it shows that something that they've worked for and that they have skills in an area um, that are very specific to their trade. And so what we've asked is based on the list available on the Agency of Education website, um, we have asked each teacher to go through and choose the minimum, which is two industry recognized credentials that they are guaranteeing to be offering to all students with the goal of 50% attainment at a minimum. Um, and so just for, for anyone who doesn't have this in front of them, so design engineering, formerly manufacturing and fabrication, is going to be offering the certified SOLIDWORKS associate industry recognized credential and the gas tungsten arc welding plate. Education services is going to be offering um, two classes INT, which I'm not entirely sure what that stands for, I need to check, but they're both education courses, so two education courses um, at the college level, so students will be earning college credit. Electrical technology will be offering NCCER core and the electrical apprenticeship year one exam. Diversified agriculture will be offering game of logging one through four and Ducks Unlimited ICEV. Sorry? Someone waiting to get in? Yep. Okay, so the owner of the meeting has to let someone in. So I'm sorry, but no one can do it but you. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Could she log into, you, you can't log into somebody else's computer? Okay. She could. Oh, okay. she could. doing that I'm gonna just go check the front door oh thank, thank you me. thank you Ann
It's the one with more people on it, not that one. It's that one. Quick join with Google Meet. Join. Sam, can you still hear me? Okay, thanks. Oh, I'll just wait till Ann comes back now. <laughs> but you have it, you have it muted, right? I do. And your mic is on. Yes. Great. So it's working through the owl. Perfect. So we'll wait for Ann to come yeah. back. But in the future, either um, switch the ownership to Lauren so she can do that, or just keep it open. So if there are people waiting, you can just let them in. That's what Lane used to always do. Okay. And so. Will do. The doors are still locked, just so you know. Mm. Thank you, Ann. I, I texted Bob and Wes, mm -hmm. but maybe a phone call is better. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> they can do it from home. It's a platform. Cool. That is cool. Okay. I think I left off at diversified agriculture. So diversified agriculture will be offering game of logging one through four and ducks and limited ICEV. Dental assisting so far is offering human biology, which is a college credit, and they are working on dental assisting certification um, through another tech center, the only other tech center who has dental assisting. Um, Health Careers is going to be offering the LNA, Licensed Nursing Assistant, and my hope is that they will also offer a medical assistant as well. Digital and Media Arts is going to be offering Adobe Certified Professional Premiere Pro and the Vermont Arts Portfolio Film and Digital Video and Multiple Media Portfolio. Diesel Technology is offering ASC Medium Heavy Duty Diesel Entry Level Engines which includes steering and suspension and brakes. And so they're offering a lot more than just two. They're also doing powertrain, preventive maintenance and inspection services, and possibly the forklift certification. We did um, purchase a fork truck, and the instructor is working on getting his forklift license so that he can teach the training. So that's a, a hope, but he is he's far exceeded the, um, the two IRCs that are required. Construction Trades is offering NCCER Core and General Carpentry Floor, Wall, and Roof Systems. And Automotive Technology is offering Vermont State Inspection and all of the ASE tests, which are seven in total. So we have a clear goal and direction. And then teachers have been um, asked once their students obtain the certifications that they then present to us those certifications so we can add them to their per um, personal learning plan and um, and their resumes and their files um, I, so we have those can I just have you repeat again so uh, the state is requiring that at least 50% of the students yes in each program or overall in the tech center in each program in each program okay must pass and okay. obtain the IRC industry recognized credential. Okay. So, yes. And so, so that's the first thing I wanted to go over. So, um, when, if you guys remember, last year I was working with my staff on the CLNA, um, the big report that I had gone over in May. And within that, that is where we saw that that was one area of improvement that we could work on. Um, and so, with the backing of the AOE, it's made it easier to pinpoint what needs to be um, improved, and they've made it very clear with a, a list of choices um, what we can do and, and how we can do it. And so that's a very positive thing, and I'm glad that it happened that way so that we can really improve all of our programs. Um, now, on to the next um, section, which is program numbers. So. There are some programs that are highlighted in yellow, um, and I'll go through them, but the AOE requires a minimum of eight students enrolled at the Tech Center in each program in order to obtain Perkins funding. And so the programs in yellow do not meet the minimum of eight student requirement. 
So design engineering is at five, health careers is at six, culinary arts is at six, criminal justice is at seven, dental assisting is at three. Um, diesel, uh, excuse me, digital media, automotive technology and diesel technology are all above eight at 11, eight and 14. Construction is at five, electrical is at nine. Education has one student, agriculture has 13, and pre-tech has 17. However, just today we had um, six additional applications that we were looking at. And so, um, as I, I wrote here, enrollment is quite fluid um, and it ebbs and flows. We had about 100, we had 124 students at the beginning. On the first day, some didn't show up, one showed up who wasn't, we didn't even know about, <laughs> like hadn't applied. Um, so some have come and said, this is not what I'm looking for, or I'd like to switch programs to a different program and move from one to another. And so we'll be accepting applications um, throughout the year as, you know, as students decide that they want to try the tech center. And as long as a student completes a half of a year in any given program, they're then eligible for work-based learning after that. So, um, yeah, our numbers are very fluid, but here, let's see, we have four, five, six of our programs um, are at or above the minimum requirements um, for the number of students. So, I have a question for yes, you. Yes, Any of the students who have decided to re return back to their home high school, what have they given you for their rationale friends yeah. um, their friends are at their high school um, I've also heard from two students uh, that academics are too hard there's a student said there's more academics here than there are at my high school but that's not true because there's only two hours a day of academics so I know high school traditional high school has more than two hours a day but that's how they felt I think mm -hmm. they were only here for one or two days Mm -hmm. um, but it's mostly friends, and mm -hmm. that's what's hard about leaving your high school for a full day program is that you really do have to, you know, give up your peer groups during the day and yeah, make new friends. Second question: mm -hmm. um, Do the sending schools allow you to go in at this time of the year and represent oh. information about the tech center before mm -hmm. that? Do we do we have to worry about the October one? It's October fifteenth. Yes. Yes. No, it's October fifteenth. So we do have to worry about that. Yes. And I'm, schools will be concerned about that as well. But yeah. I'm just wondering, would they? It's interesting that you should ask that. You know, I don't know. My impression is that schools are trying to also hold on to their own students, mm -hmm. and so it feels like we are all in competition with each other. It's kind of a an unfortunate feeling mm -hmm. instead of so, looking out for the best interests of what's the best yeah. interest for the students and it's yes so I don't know because last year was my first year I don't know if it would be acceptable but it's a good idea to consider and maybe they would I don't know yet I, mm. and I, I tread carefully um, and respectfully when you know, because I understand everyone wants to hold on to their students. Um, mm -hmm. But if that's allowed, perhaps, I mean, I'm not sure. Sam, what do you think? I don't have insight on this. Um, it's, yeah, it seems to me that any PR effort we can do, I mean, Maybe there's kids who aren't going to do well, aren't looking, aren't going to thrive in the traditional setting of their high school. So if we can be an option before October 15th, it seems like we should make ourselves available. But I, I agree, you're probably, there is a level of competition there. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing I could do is reach out to the state and ask, has this been done before? Is this allowable? And go from there. If it's allowable and I am allowed to by the principals, then I certainly think it's a good idea. If they say, no, this is really not expected uh, at this time of year, then I would, I would not.
So the current enrollment is, is what number? Oh yes, Again? total enrollment is 105. Okay. And that does not include the potential applicants. Now we, we do have a pretty rigorous process for being accepted to RTCC. So we look at attendance, behavior, and academics, as well as a student's um, interview or how they tour, you know, the questions they ask, are they coming because they really want to be here? Are they trying to be closer to a, a girlfriend or boyfriend that already goes mm -hmm. here? Like, what are their motivations? Um, and so we look at all of those things. So, you know, potentially all six students may come, okay. but not necessarily. Yeah, I just wonder, um, now as I'm out and about in the community, mm -hmm. there's so many employers who need kids who have the technical education that you can get from a tech center. Absolutely. And um, and I, I do recognize, having been out in the schools a while, I mean, that that they tend to want to hold on to their students, but yeah. I think as a region, we need to think about the workforce development. Workforce development, yeah. and you know, I've that run into sense. builders who will say, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't find, find good workers. Beginning level carpenters who could work up into, you know, higher positions. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the other piece too, though, is that we need to have the student interest because if you're looking at the numbers, like how they're trending this year, um, they they surprise me. From a, I've been in tech centers for a while, and and some of these numbers, um, you know, if you're looking at at a job where you're going to make a lot of money, you, you think the dental assisting um, numbers would be higher, but they were at three, four for the past couple years. Um, Diesel is increasingly popular, um, and as is electrical, um, and pre-tech was very popular this year, agriculture, but then, you know, we're in need, we need teachers so badly, um, but it's hard to convince students that teaching is a great career for them right now. Um, construction, I mean, there are so many jobs available, and yet we have only five students. Um, so I think that, and I think I've said this before, and it's hard to articulate in some ways, but I'm not sure that the interests of students are necessarily aligned always with the needs of the community mm -hmm. when they're yeah. young. Yeah. You know, I think that, of, yeah. Of last pre pre-tech students, how many are enrolled in the tech center? Like almost all of them. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I think there may have been one that we did not accept for behavioral reasons. We did not welcome back, but like, I'm, yeah, everybody's in a program as far as I can think. And before the end of the year, last year, um, we had some students that were really excelling in their particular program that they were most interested in going into. We allowed them to go in a little bit early um, to get some extra hours in. And so those students are continuing with us. Um, I have an example of a student in criminal justice who went in at the end of the last month and a half and is continuing in criminal justice and really thriving. So, yeah. Now, pre-tech is a great way to get students interested and involved in the school. And then once they meet our teachers, our teachers are, are fabulous. They're so kind. We have really wonderful resources in our school and just a really nice community of caring adults. Um, I think that the kids are hooked once they're fully committed to you know, also understanding that there are academic standards. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in, in a few minutes. Sorry, I, I got a sidetrack. No, track. that was a really um. good, really good question, a really good thought. And, and I will follow up and see if I'm allowed to, to do that. I don't, I don't know if I am, but I'll ask. What, um, sorry, I'm going to ask one That's more fine. question because I don't know the, um, I don't know. Um, is there, what is the, the state or this region's workforce development 
agency or quasi public because um, there were do you mean who oversees the tech center no or who, no no oh, workforce They're development specifically workforce development in particular is that, is that done hmm. through the Department of Labor I believe so there's an organization I mean the workforce development just came out with a um, professional development that my work-based learning coordinator is going to and I think that it came from the Department of Labor mm -hmm. I would have to double check I get all my information from the Agency of Education from the Career and Technical Department yeah because I don't I I know um, the McClure Foundation mm -hmm. yes they they produce yep. these every year I think in collaboration with the um, Department of Labor yes those do come through the Department of we use those as part of our CLNA statistics. Mm -hmm. How about for recruitment or getting information to parents and community members? Mm -hmm. Yep, that is part of our recruitment efforts. Okay, and great. we're actually having um, these beautiful lookbooks made right now. And they link to, um, they have QR codes built in where you can scan it and see um, in Vermont what the, the trending salaries are and salary ranges and um, the percent of future jobs that would be available um, based on that information um, yeah yes yeah. no it's a good suggestion and we are on that so yeah okay people so. are really motivated from what I hear um, there was a student this year who applied who said I want to do whatever makes the most money but honestly that's not what I hear the most the thing I hear the most is I just want to be happy and do something I enjoy and so sometimes I think like that's why we see numbers and particular programs be higher or trending higher is because of the interests of the students more so than being money financially motivated mm -hmm. at least right now could change um, okay so uh, the next thing that I wanted to bring to your attention we talked about this in May a little bit um, and I want to tell you what I did to help improve it and um, I don't I don't know well I'll just tell you so um, I received information from the Agency of Education about what is required of uh, the RTCC RAB and um, so I laid it out here there's four different areas and we are in compliance with one of them so the first one is that one member from each public high school in the center service region elected by and from by and from among the members of that high school board for a term determined by that high school school board. So we do not have, we do not have that. Um, and so I guess, I think what I'll do is I'll just lay out everything that's required and then I'll tell mm -hmm. you what I did. Yeah. Um, and then we need uh, the superintendent or his or her designee of each supervisory union within the center service region. Um, one member elected for a term of three years um, by four and among the school board of each sending district in the center service region that did not have a public high school represented on the advisory board under number one. Um, and three additional members elected by the RAB to represent the interests of employers um, or employees provided that no two terms shall expire in any year. And so um, I believe that with um, and Sam and Nathan that we are in compliance with number four I believe unless I'm wrong um, but um, I did reach out to all of the superintendents in the sending region I think I actually reached out to too many um, because I took that the verbiage very literally and anyone who can send their students to RTCC I reached out to um, but then was told that it shouldn't be uh, students or supervisor unions where we are not their primary tax center. So I did hear back from one superintendent, um, in fact from Spalding, who was uh, so kind and willing to attend and then I, I did let them know that um, because we're not their primary sending school that it actually, it, they don't, they didn't need to worry. <laughs> so, um, but other superintendents were not able to attend this evening. Um, it, so I did try that in July, and I thought maybe giving some very advanced notice might help, but it, um, it didn't work out that way. So I need help and thoughts on how to get um, superintendents interested in attending the RAB, and, and as well as other members of their school community 
um, to attend either online or in person. Um, and also thoughts on anybody locally that might also be interested. Do you have any thoughts on that or any idea of people I might be able to contact that might want to do this and advise us? Uh, I was concerned about this too, so I actually printed off the law. Um, and I've been sort of trying to think about um, who, who might be interested and maybe how we as, as board members might be able to help you reach out because uh, be great. one member from each public high school board, right? Yes. Um, you know, I think we're, we're about to have our our BSBA conference, so we're going to be running into other board members, oh. for potentially from our sending districts. So oh. I think sort of reaching out to them when, if we see them there. That would be so wonderful. Um, Thank you. But in addition to that, beforehand, um, I don't know about you, Sam, but I feel comfortable sort of maybe emailing uh, the other boards and encouraging them. Um, the other, the one thing that I was thinking about is, you know, it's, it's hard to attend meetings, so I think uh, we need to make sure that we are clear about sort of the tasks that, that need to be done and the importance of them so that we have a really nice, clear message about and the benefit, the benefit to their community, right. the benefit to Vermonters as a whole. I would love I think to is hear really from them about how important. they think it would be best received in their sending districts um, when, they, when they hear about what we have to offer and, and maybe even learning about what their individual community needs are so that we can sort of tailor our discussion with students to that and with school counselors. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the other thing we can do is you and I can reach out to Matt and Jamie, Matt Kinnard, or Matt Feathers and Jamie Kinnard, mm -hmm. the other two superintendents. Yes. Um, to say, hey, you know, what do, what do we need to do? What's, what do, what do they, what they think is holding us up? I can tell you that you. when I was on the RAB in the Northeast Kingdom, we did it at the, the Northeast Kingdom. Um, most of the time we did it at the St. John's Berry Academy cafe oh. and they did it in the cafe and they made sure that there was some sort of snack kind of okay. thing there and highlight what the kids Food were doing the and pulling yeah. that together so it provided a little bit of a little different ambiance than being in a in a library at, at five o'clock um, mm -hmm. and then I think we maybe we we can look at how we're advertising and getting getting the agendas together and out so that people know and say, hey, this is important, let's, okay. let's get here. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. And, and just so you know, they did, Jamie and Matt did respond to me. Um, yeah. But, yeah, but they and weren't able to. Well, I think it might be a little different if I reach out to them tomorrow and say, hey, yeah, there, was, so there great. was only random people. We want to hear from you. people at the, yeah. at the, at the, at the RAB. RAB. serious stuff going on here, right? We're, we're looking at half of our programs don't have the enrollment to mm -hmm. be eligible for Perkins loans, mm -hmm. or for Perkins, Perkins money. Credits, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, my guess is that's not sustainable over the, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're in a spot where we're, we're sort of committed to it this year, but oh, yes. I <laughs> would imagine that if we were looking at enrollment similar to this next year, as a wrap, we're gonna have to say, hey, Mm-hmm. Agreed. So I think that I think it's kind of a serious, it's kind of a serious thing. And mm -hmm. That's what the RAP is supposed to be there for, to exactly. look at that and help guide. I would really appreciate some help with that. That would be great. It, is RAB a mandated thing, or do you that's just have to meet these requirements once you've decided to have an advisory board. No, it's absolutely mandated and technically we're not in compliance 
now okay. nor were we last year. To get into compliance, we would need two more superintendents and and no, it can be their designee. So we've had a curriculum coordinator in the past. Um, but there should be representatives here, Sam. Okay. And then the other requirement was two board members from the sending districts. Okay, so uh, let's see. One member from each public high school in the center service region elected by and from among the members of that high school board. So one board member from each high school, that's sense here. And then the superintendent or his or her designee. Um, and then and then one member elected for a term of three years by and from among the school board of each sending district. Um, and then three additional members elected by the RAB to represent the interests of employers, um, which we have covered with you, Anne, and Nathan. So this I is believe. interesting um, because if I, if I understand correctly, uh, Jamie's district is a unified district. Northfield and Williamstown. Northfield and Williamstown is a unified district. So that's, so really, so do we need two from each board or just one from each board? It says one member from each public high school. Right. So I, for some reason, I don't, I think they haven't updated this Does yours law. Say Mine says the same thing. Oh, this but came from directly, f like, emailed from the Agency of Education to me. Right, well, it's they're pulling it right Same. off of I the, think okay. one person could represent both high schools. Right. No, right, well, if you think about it. It would be better than not having one. Right. Uh, I'm wondering if this law was not updated once mm -hmm. we started unifying all the districts. What oh. do you think, Mike? I mean, I think it doesn't really matter right now because we don't have any of that representation. Right, so right. If, right. If, if so if we, we can at least start with one. The more people that one, show up, the better. <laughs> you know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's what I would be saying, that's what I'd be saying to Jamie and Matt, is that the way yeah. that I interpret this at the moment is we need them and their designee, one person from their high right. school boards, however they're structured. Uh, they, they have, I don't know if there's two separate high school boards. I'd I let know. them figure, I'd let them yeah. figure that out. Right. And then, you know, I think that, uh, one of you is representing the board for Orange Southwest. It looks like there's these other positions that we need to we need to get. We need to reach out to some employers out there and say, hey, would you like to be on the wrap, maybe? And you know, what's going on? So we've got to we've got to look at this um, in a pretty comprehensive way. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Heather has a con uh, a contact that she shared with me that I somehow missed. It, or we'll reach out. Okay. okay. Thank you. So that's, that's all pretty heavy lift to get us into compliance. I can count as a as an employer, but um, and and as a school board member, but we and I'm happy to, like Ann said, reach out to some employers like LED um, and maybe Vermont Manufacturing Extension Center up at VTC. Oh, that'd be they, great have direct interest in this. Um, We'd love to be more involved with VTC, so that would be a really nice connection. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, thanks, Sam. That would be great. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm not sure where we are on time. I'm just gonna take a quick, okay. So um, we have some new hires. I just wanted to let you all know. So design engineering, we have Michael Porzio and our student services coordinator is Brent Pearson. Uh, we have a new math teacher named Min Koo. Digital media is Samuel LaPointe. Lauren Blanchard Gino sitting next to me is my new administrative assistant. Dental instructor, we have Delta, Dr. Melton Denise. Um, our health careers program has Colleen Kottenbach and criminal justice, Todd Sprague. So I just wanted to publicly say that I'm so happy they're here and just to welcome all of them. 
um, to our staff and to our community. So very happy to have them. Um, I also wanted to update you on something that I'm really excited about, which is um, that we had spoken last year a couple of times about our math and ELA scores um, being quite low and that we had a plan for improving them. And so it's very nice to finally be back at school with the new plan and our new schedule um, and to see it all in action. So um, we now offer, um, we have ELA four times a week for our students instead of two, so we doubled it. And then we now have math four times a week, which is doubled from two times a week for students. Um, and we also have callback time, which is worked into our schedule on a daily basis. So students have one full day of programming and then four days where they have two hours of academics a day plus callback time every day. Um, we have increased our mathematics standards. Um, we have uh, invested in a great new algebra program um, and we have absolutely increased our emphasis on the work keys test which is um, required by the Agency of Education. Um, I like to think of it as SATs for career and technical education and so a score of five, six or seven is considered passing and so we are asking all of our students and putting a lot of emphasis on them doing their best on the test and trying to achieve a five. If they have a five, going for a six or a seven. Um, and so we are definitely putting an emphasis on academics so that our students, when they come out of our programs, not only have industry recognized credentials, but are more competitive academically in math, reading, and writing. Um, let's see. We, we talked about number seven, which was um, increasing interest in the RAB membership. And, oh, number eight. My last point is um, I just wanted to know if either of you had any ideas um, for people or businesses that might be great advisory board members for some of our programs. So as an example, um, I was looking to see if for agriculture, electrical, really construction, really any, I'm open to any ideas, but are there any companies that you think that we should be contacting um, for advisory board members? You already have someone from Catamount Solar? I believe we do. Actually, I'm just super 99% we do. Yeah, we have several students doing work based on email. Let me think about it. Okay. Let me, and I'll, I, think I can email you, right? Of course. Please do. Um, there's a generator company up in Brookfield. Generac? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You've got them. involved in them. <laughs> but they, I believe so. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you, though. Yeah, and it's so Brookfield which, Generator. <coughs> which Brookfield are, Generator. Yeah. Yeah. Which programs, again, are you looking for? Well, really, all of them, to be all honest with you. Um, and and what is, what's, what's Digital the, media would be great. What's the uh, what's the role of sure. someone who would be on that advisory? Sure. Okay. Group? So twice a year we have meetings at our TCC where we invite all of the advisory board members to meet with the program instructors. They have dinner and they talk about the industry needs. Um, they advise the curriculum um, and advise and inform the teacher on curriculum needs. Um, real world um, deficits that employees have coming into new work experiences and really emphasize what type of information the instructor should be giving to their students. So mm -hmm. as an example, um, if you are an automotive dealership that's seeing an interest and an uptick in interest in uh, electric vehicles, and you suggest that your students should have knowledge of, of repairing electrical vehicles, but you don't have that in your program. You don't have an electric vehicle. We do now, but in the event that we didn't, and they said, you know, this is really up and coming, you should have that, they would advise, and then when we reach out to, um, to our program instructors and ask them, you know, what are the needs, what, what items, what big ticket items do you feel like you need, what should we be thinking about purchasing, they would say my advisory board suggests that we should have X, 
Y, and Z so that we can be at, you know, cutting edge. So, so a commitment of two times a year. Yes. With a dinner. With right? a dinner. That's, With a that's dinner. the part that everyone really Providing likes. Providing dinner. Yes. Dinner provided. And then advise on the curriculum and, yes. and um, industry needs. Industry needs, yes. And, um, you know, in, they may end up also becoming um, places where students might do a work-based learning opportunity, a co-op, um, or, you know, resources. They might become guest speakers at some point within, mm -hmm. within the school, or they might um, become involved with scholarships. Um, there are lots of ways to get involved and give back and also to let the school know what you believe is really important and what the teacher should be focusing on. It can also help inform what the industry recognized credentials are that we get. So that list can change. There's, there's quite a few options and that list could change based on what the advisory board says is needed. So it's a fun role and it's a very important role. And it's also um, imperative that we have this as an agency of education requirement because it really informs the instruction that we give. Please. <laughs> Sorry. Don't be well, sorry. Um, you know, there, there's been a bit of turmoil in the tech center, um, and I don't know if you know the history, but have, have, because in the past I don't recall ever hearing about the need for additional people for the advisory role, but I wasn't on the RAB, so, um, but sometimes that would filter through to the regular um, board meeting. But I wonder, did it, have you been in a position where you've, you know, we went through COVID, there was turmoil, you've come in as a new person and you're kind of almost starting from just scratch because things yes. kind of fell apart a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was just curious if that much, isn't where you found yourself. So pretty much feels like we got a bit of a hill to, to climb, but yeah. Yes, yeah. and we talked a bit about that, and I think it was before you joined towards the end of the year last mm -hmm. year that my plan at the beginning of the year, and I think Sam will remember because he was here from at the fall meeting last year, was that I was very concerned about our math and ELA scores because we were the lowest in the state. And not only that, at the time, I didn't realize that we were not in compliance with IRCs. There was a lot to learn last year, and it wasn't until the CLNA came out that I realized how uh, much of a deficit we had. Um, mm -hmm. And so the point of the CLNA is to point out areas where you can improve. Um, and so it did just that. Um, and so. Yes, there was, there's so much, there was so much change and it's starting to stabilize and even out. Um, plus our system of selecting students, it's a blind admissions process, but it's really based on, on their academics and their, their rigor and their interest and, and what they hope to accomplish after they leave high school and their attendance and it's really looking at a whole child. So when we look at it like that and we really say, you know, what do you need and what can we offer you? I think you know, you're gonna have maybe a lower level at first, uh, fewer numbers in our programs, but then you start, it gets easier once you have a solid group of students and other people see that these students are being so successful here. And then I know that we will gain more students. It just, we're in the process of regenerating and rebuilding, yeah. so. So on a positive note, yeah. I happened to be with a friend um, and we noticed that the Habitat for Humanity house was open and people were working on it. Yes. It was on a Saturday or a Sunday, I forget which. Um, and so we popped in oh, and nice. we said, hey, we're, we're interested in learning more about how things are going and how, how you might volunteer if we had some time. and. The main person was not there. However, they said, here, Jason can fill you in on what's going Aww, on. Jason is one of your tech center mm -hmm. students, second year he makes us really building proud. trades. Very, extremely well-spoken. Isn't he? Um, He's so professional. Yes, so him. professional. I was so impressed with his, 
his um, ability to take two strangers around this place, explain what was going on. Doesn't surprise me at and all. And then, of course, we're older <laughs> and we're like peppering him with, so what are your plans and what do you, you know. And He's going to work with Habitat for Humanity after they're finished with that house. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, Nothing. it was yeah. just, it was really, it was, it, it, spoke volumes oh, to so nice. what's going on at RTCC yeah. and what students can get out Thank of it. Um, so I was like, here's a, here's a, a poster so student. Um, yeah. He's done really yeah. well. He's been really encouraged by his instructor um, and encouraged by Habitat for Humanity. And not only that, I will say that he has also um, been such a great influence on another student and he's gotten that student to volunteer his own time on Saturdays. So you may have met a second student or seen a second student there. And so the, the goodwill, I think, is kind of reverberating through the building. Right, it's, right. It's been very positive. Well, the other Thank thing you. that was really super. So just going to share with you guys that we are three minutes away from the start of the next meeting oh. scheduled here. Okay. Last thing was he was very proud of his academic skills and that he's like He's done, done so well on the yes. eight keys that it work allows keys, yes. him, or the work keys, That's that true. it allows him to do, you know, take advantage of other opportunities because he can right. move on to other things because he's showing uh, proficiency so Thank well. you for sharing that. He's a wonderful example and, and absolutely uh, the gold standard to which we all hope to achieve with all of our students. So well, that was really nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Sam, for being here. And um, please email me if you have any ideas for companies that you think would be really, really beneficial for our programs. Um, and yes, and I would say too, especially for if you, anyone has any digital media um, ideas, we're looking for graphic designers that might want to um, be on the advisory board or have work-based learning students in, in their businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Good job. Keep up Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. And I'm going to turn this off then. Okay. Bye bye.